Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw the neck and shoulders. Uh, so what I've done is just drawn a head to begin with, and this is more or less accurate to real human anatomy. And uh, you can see, if you look uh, carefully, that the the top of the head to the bottom of the head and then to the sides creates the measurement of this initial rectangle, okay? So what I've done is sort of uh, reproduced that on either side. Now sometimes people want to know what is the actual measurement of this uh, rectangle that I've done. So, you know, for your uh, <laughs> guidance, it's a, what is it, almost two and a half inches tall. And uh, what do we have here on the width? Um, about an, an inch and a half exactly. Uh, if you want to try to draw at, at this exact same scale, but mainly you want to get the proportions of it. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is to talk a little bit about the actual anatomy of the neck. So I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see this a little more closely. All right, so here you see uh, what I feel are the most important muscles uh, uh, to be aware of. These two here and here. It's called, uh, unfortunately for me, the sternocleidomastoides which is quite a mouthful. Some people, I think, just call it the sternomastoid uh, for short. Uh, in any case, um, these are the muscles that you will see and have to be aware of as an artist. Now, here we have these bones, the bone structure called the clavicle, and uh, this also is something to be aware of uh, in the final drawing. And finally, uh, what we usually just call the Adam's apple, apparently is called the laryngeal prominence. I have to push my glasses back up my nose as I say that one. Uh, in any case, I found that it was helpful to, to sort of get some sense of the actual anatomy before moving on to the drawing. Okay, so let's set this aside and let's get into the next step of the drawing. Okay, so uh, as I said, I've drawn these uh, rectangular guidelines, and what I'm going to do now in time lapse is add uh, a few more guidelines underneath that are going to help us place the lines of the neck and shoulders. So what I've done here is just drawn three perfect squares, right? So it's an inch and a half on all sides for all three of these. And uh, I should say this is just my technique that I've come up with. Um, real art teachers may feel that it's a crazy way of teaching how to do this, but I found that it was helpful. First of all, fig for figuring out the width of the shoulders. How wide are they? Uh, and then uh, the most tricky thing for me is the angle, the slope of the shoulders. Now, I'm going to start with the neck, and um, depending on how... Um, you know, athletic the person is that you're drawing, we all are aware that the neck can become quite wide, um, you know, like with a football player uh, or someone like that. What I'm doing is going for a little, I don't know, slightly athletic, not, uh, not overly so. And so uh, by looking at that line there, you can get sort of a sense of uh, where to move in. You could also sort of move down from the ears and uh, just move in just a little as your guideline for where to start that. But then watching this box, um, you get a sense of just passing this line. That's when you want to start hooking over and beginning to find this slope of the shoulders. Now, uh, it might even be helpful to think of this in terms of uh, an actual angle. Um, for me, uh, I'm finding that it's coming ever so slightly more in a horizontal direction than a vertical direction. Um, and uh, that is really the best that I can do, short of pulling out a protractor or whatever and coming up with the actual angle there. Um, but uh, I find that having the box here is going to help me figure out where the end of the shoulders comes. And uh, for me, I'm finding that it's occurring just outside of that uh, perfect square box. All right. Now I've kind, I'm kind of just simplifying things, curving it around here, giving this guy sort of a round shoulder shape. But what we're going to have to do is start to um, establish the clavicle bone later on. And I found in a lot of photographs that I studied that that clavicle was actually interrupting the contour of the shoulder. Now, in time lapse, to save time, I'm going to reproduce this exact same line over here. All right, now just to clarify, because I think a lot of people will ask, do you, every time you draw this, are you going to draw these boxes? And no, not every single time. I think maybe this is just a, a way of getting it right the first time so that you can become aware of the relationships between these different things. Now, as I said, we have the clavicle uh, coming across here, and that's what I'm going to start drawing. Um, have a look at uh, where there's the curve of the shoulder just as it's coming up to that slope. Uh, I, in a lot, again, photographs, I'm always trying to do a sort of a reality check and look at uh, what this actually looks like in real life. 
I look at photographs of, uh, uh, you know, a guy like uh, out on the beach who's not wearing a shirt and was able to see this actual visible um, clavicle bone, you know, kind of showing through the skin, at least creating something that was visible enough that you would want to reflect it uh, in a uh, drawing. Um, a lot of times I think the trouble is you become aware of these muscles that are underneath the skin and you're tempted to draw every single one of them, but then you look at a photograph and you find, hey, you know, a lot of those muscles are not actually all that visible, uh, unless you have someone who has really uh, highly defined muscles. In any case, let me go ahead and uh, time lapse through this other line here that more or less echoes the first one. All right, so now that we've got the clavicle in place, it's time to uh, start getting some indication of the um, sternomastoid, these two muscles. Now, uh, sadly, I, uh, this is an example of something where I found that in looking at photographs uh, and the way that things show through the skin or don't uh, show through the skin, I found that this was an area where I had to be pretty careful about not overdoing it. Um, uh, again, just to remind you of what I'm talking about here, these two muscles are coming in quite prominently underneath the surface of the skin. But if we've got a light source, say, coming from the upper left, you may get a fair amount of shading over here on this side of the one uh, sternomastoid uh, that's coming up across the neck. I don't think you're going to get quite so much shading on this one just because of the way, you know, the surface of the skin is. You might get, a, a, again, I looked at a photograph and I found that it, there was a, a fair amount of shading coming in right here at the bottom of it. Not so much anywhere across here. Um, so, you know, different people may disagree and say, hey, you really ought to put a line like right across here to finish that off. But I'm just going by what I saw in photographs of what happens in real life. Uh, and limiting myself to that. So let's go ahead and think in terms of where is the Adam's apple going to be, uh, the laryngeal prominence. Um, and I found that uh, it is uh, quite a bit closer to the chin, at least when someone's looking at you dead on like this, than it is down towards the clavicle. And, um, you know, some people, I know I'm the guy, I have a terribly prominent Adam's apple. It shows up awkwardly in photos all over the place. Most people, not so visible. And I guess famously, uh, the key difference between the male neck and the female neck uh, is uh, the degree to which you can see an Adam's apple. So I'm told. Um, but let's go across here and uh, start to indicate a, a shadow that's uh, formed across the neck by the chin. Um, again, this is based on a photograph I saw that, uh, that gave me a sense of at least where the sun was, you know, in that particular photo. Uh, it was creating a, uh, an area of shading or shadow that just fell right across here, keeping this kind of a shape. Um, and you can sort of take advantage of that to maybe, um, you know, reveal the uh, sternomastoid as it's, you know, I don't want to say coming up through the skin, <laughs> sounds like a horror movie, <laughs> but visible uh, through the skin, above the skin, in the skin. You can see it, man. Anyway, uh, you can see that uh, the shading is helping to reveal the structure underneath. But I would say actually, you know, 90% of the job for me is just getting these initial lines in the right place. Um, and, and I would say a lot of times over the years, as I was just winging it, uh, I wasn't getting these lines. I wasn't getting the slope of the shoulders. I wasn't getting the width of the shoulders right, the width of the neck and so forth. And so that's what I really wanted to focus on with this video. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to um, final lines with my trusty black Prismacolor. And maybe I can come back and say uh, a word or two to finish off the video.
right. Well, that's pretty much it. I did want to add one last thing, and, and that is that this area of vertical shading here, it seems to me, is related to the secondary part of the, ster the sternomastoid. Uh, you know, this V-shaped thing, very uh, clear. Uh, but behind it, it seems to be a secondary part of that muscle, and that it can sometimes show up a little bit here and here. Um, but I want to thank everyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. We've got Mickey Falls, we've got Brody's Ghost, we've got Mastering Manga. You guys have been so great about ordering these books, and I really do want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Though I think I do also need to apologize. No blushies this time, and that is the way it will remain. I don't have to draw blushies every time, people. I don't know, it just doesn't seem right with this drawing. What's he, What's the guy got a blush about? I don't know. Um, you are welcome to add them in your own drawings if you please, but I just don't feel like this is one of those blushies drawings. But maybe it's time for me to lay down the pencil. Thank you one more time for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.